3.2, what is matter? Not what is the matter, but what is matter? One of the fun things about teaching is that I've got a new group of students every semester, and so I can recycle jokes over and over and over again. The sad thing is that they always get the same response, which is dead silence. But I persist, and sometimes somebody's going to laugh. What is matter? One way to define matter is it's anything that occupies space and has mass. Occupies space and has mass. So it has mass and volume. Some kinds of matter we can see. What's an example of matter that you can see right now? The board. How about your hand? Can you see anything else? Pencil. Pretty much anything that you could put a sticker on is made out of matter. Other kinds of matter are impossible to see without magnification. What's something in this room <coughs> that is matter but we can't see it? Air. And somebody said dust. Small particles of dust we can't really see. And we know from the news that there's particles in the air, right? Lately the air's been really bad and the, the particulate levels are high and so it's not good to be outside exercising because those particles get into your lungs and it's not good. But <coughs> air is probably the best uh, example of Something that is matter, but we can't actually see it. Does air occupy space? It does. If you inflate a balloon, what are you putting into the balloon to make it get bigger? Air. Is the air taking up space? Yes, it is. It is. Does air have mass? Yeah, it does. It does. So when we look at matter, maybe look at, the, at your desk. It looks really nice and smooth, doesn't it? These are, are relatively new desks, and they're all nice and shiny and smooth. And so it looks continuous. It looks like that desktop is one piece of matter, <coughs> right? Nice and smooth. But it actually is not continuous. It's made up of little tiny particles called atoms. These are submicroscopic. Sub is a prefix that means below. A submarine goes below the surface of the water. Submicroscopic is smaller than what we can see with a microscope. Very, very small. The atoms are the building blocks of matter. Have any of you guys been to Legoland? Anybody? Legoland's an awesome place. It's in San Diego. It's more fun if you have kids. But they have, this, they have this huge area where they've built all kinds of things out of Lego. They have the Taj Mahal. They have the White House. They have the pyramids. They have Mount Rushmore, all made out of Legos. Legos can be used as an analogy for atoms. They're the building blocks. If you build a big enough thing out of Legos and you stand back from it, it looks a lot like the real thing, but when you get closer, you see that it's actually individual bricks. So matter, like the matter in your desktop, if we were able to zoom in on it through the submicroscopic level to see the actual atoms, we'd see that it's made up of little tiny blocks. They're not square, though, like Legos. They're round. Those atoms can join together and make molecules. A molecule is just two or more atoms that are joined together in a specific geometric arrangement. So if you think of people as being like atoms, then a family might be like a molecule, where you have a people that have joined together, and this is a family. It's a family unit. <coughs> So here's the picture of a top of an aluminum can. 
And the aluminum looks smooth and shiny, but if we, if we were to look more closely, we'd see that it's actually made out of aluminum atoms. In some substances, like aluminum metal, the atoms exist as individual atoms. In other substances, okay, so we just have to pause a minute. Can anyone see the error in this photograph from your textbook? It has to do with the words. Uh, yeah, this says, up here they're labeling this isopropyl alcohol, which is rubbing alcohol. And what does this say? Pure ethyl alcohol. Really? Come on, guys. It's just, wow. It's not the only mistake they've made. Okay. I just can't help myself about stuff like that. So if we look at this rubbing alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol, and we zoom in on it, we see that it's composed of molecules. But each of these molecules is composed of atoms. In one of these molecules, we have oxygen atoms. Those are shown in red. We have hydrogen atoms shown as white ones. And carbon atoms are the black ones. Each of these molecules is the same as the other but each of the molecules is composed of atoms. Atoms are the fundamental building block of matter. Any piece of matter can be broken down ultimately into atoms. We cannot see atoms, but using something called a <coughs> scanning tunneling microscope we can get images, computer-generated images of atoms. What happens here is they take a, um, the tip, a, a little electrode, and the tip of it is incredibly small. It's on the size of atoms. And they pass a current through it, and then they run, they run the, the probe over the surface and keep the current constant and the tip, so the tip ends up moving up and down, and we can generate this um, image of atoms that way. Now these don't look spherical, do they? They look like weird little cones or something. So even this is not the greatest image. We do know from other evidence that atoms are spherical. But this is just amazing that we can distinguish atoms as these individual bumps at all. This is a scanning tunneling microscope image of a DNA molecule. The yellow is the DNA molecule. What do you know about the, um, the shape of a DNA molecule? Double helix, right? It's got, a, each, it's got two strands, and they form like a ladder that twists around on itself. So let's see if I can, nope, drawing in the wrong place. So can you see that double helix in there? We can actually get images of DNA. We can see that double-stranded structure of the DNA. It's really cool. Uh, 